Howdy folks, John here. In today's video, I'm hopefully going to be showing you how to repair an iCharger S6. I'll be going over the actual problem with it, how to open this, and hopefully how to fix it. And this will apply to any of the uh, X series or their S series chargers. So if you wanted to know how to get into one of these things, uh, what makes them tick. Hopefully this uh, video will give you some information and of course if it's got this exact problem that I've got. And the problem is, I don't know if you can see this, cell number six will not uh, balance. The uh, little indicator is at full bar, meaning it's producing the maximum 2 amp uh, load on cell six, or it should be, but it will not balance up. When I'm charging packs, I noticed cell 6 was getting overcharged on my packs when using this little charger. And uh, right now we're just in a balance uh, program right now. All the other cells are balanced up pretty much, but cell 6 just will not come down. So that's the problem. This, by the way, has been a great little charger. And uh, I pretty much knew I fried it the moment it happened. I accidentally plugged the balance lead in backwards when I wasn't paying attention. And you may ask yourself, how is it possible to plug a balance lead in backwards? You know, they've got the little keyway in them. Trust me, anything is possible when a dumbass is at the helm. Regardless, let's get this thing open and see what might be wrong. I'm kind of hoping it might just be a trace burnt out but it could also be the resistor bridge, if these things use a resistor bridge, or the switching transistor. Like I said, this has been a great little charger, and it's only because of my dumbass mistake that uh, I've cooked it. I did a review on this a while back. I'll fire a link below in the description if you wanted to learn more about these. But for the price, they're a powerful and awesome little charger. No screws that you can see to get into it, and they're actually hidden under the display. So first thing we got to do is pull off the display. It's just stuck on with double-sided tape. This isn't actually the display, it's the uh, plastic screen that's over the display. Just slowly work your fingers along, try not to bend it. There we go. As you can see, there's some adhesive on here. You should be able to stick it back on. So there we go. And there's our four screws that we've got to take out. But we've got to take the little display out first. So again, we'll just uh, stick our knife in there. It's not glued in or anything. And then there's just a little catch for the ribbon cable here. You just pull up that little grape part. Sorry, my hand was in the way, but once you pull it up, the little rape ribbon cable will just come out. And now we can get the uh, screws out here. And it's kind of clipped in a little bit. Those screws going to stay in there? Oh, they kind of will. We'll just keep them in there so we don't lose them. So yeah, this thing is just packed full of electronics. And uh, now we've got to get the uh, board out. If you've got a micro SD card in there, make sure you take that out because it'll be sticking out a ways and it'll catch on the uh, case. Yeah, so a lot going on on these little boards inside these little chargers. Where are the resistors for the, here's the balance input. You know what? They're not even using resistors. They must be switching the cell right to ground. So these are, I guess these would be considered power transistors because they're carrying quite a bit of current. You know, two amps is what it's uh, rated at. We'll have to get a number off of those. And they're actually being controlled by these little switching transistors. In other eye chargers or RC battery chargers I've pulled apart, there's been the little switching transistors that, uh, you know, close the circuit between the balance lead and a big resistor or an array of resistors. But here they're using these uh, transistors as the resistance source, probably just cycling them, pulsing them 
to vary the uh, load. Anyway, what we got to do now is find out which one controls cell 6. So uh, this was in there like that. Cell 1 is always the negative, cell 6 is the positive. So that's this one here. So this is cell 6. I just got to get out my multimeter here. So I hope everything's in frame here. One thing to note, as you can see, the fan is very easy to change, and that's a complaint you'll often hear about on all the uh, S and X series I chargers. I've never had an issue, but apparently some people have noisy fans, but as you can see, easy to replace. That's not our problem, however, today. We are having to find out why cell 6 isn't balancing. So first I'm going to put my uh, meter into continuity mode. So we can just make sure where cell 6 is. So we know that top pin is the balance lead for cell 6. And we'll just run it across. Oh. This transistor array. So there it is. So this is the little transistor that's putting a load on cell 6. And it in turn, of course, is being controlled by this little switching transistor below it. Yeah. So that must be the uh, base of the power transistor. So is it that or that? In order to find out, we have to first get the uh, spec sheet on these. So let's get a number off of them. Come on, focus. J42CG. Just got to hold it at the right light. So let's bring up the data sheet on that. Now you don't really need to know any of the specifics on the data sheet to change one of these. I just thought I'd bring it up so we can have a peek. So first thing we'll want to find out is what type of transistor. So the 42C is a PNP meaning that uh, we've got a p-type collector and emitter and an n-type base and this is just important for when we're uh, testing it with our multimeter there's the schematic image of it going back to our data sheet all that we really need to know here here's all the specs and ratings for it we just want to know which pins are the base the collector and the emitter and as we can see here our base is pin number one, so the far left pin when we're looking face on at the transistor. The center pin number two is the collector. Collector is also electrically conductive, as you can see, with four, which is the heat sink backplate. Don't have to really worry about that. And pin number three on the far right is the emitter. So now that we know that, we can test it with our multimeter. Okay, so we know these are a PNP transistor. We know that this is the base, this is the collector, and this is the emitter. So to test a uh, PMP transistor with a DMM, we want to be in the diode checking scale, and we're going to check the voltage drop between the base and the collector and the base and the emitter. Because it's a PNP, we want to have our negative on the base lead and we want to see a voltage drop to the collector from the base that's open base to emitter that's looking right so that junction is fine there's our voltage drop from the base to the emitter but base to collector is open. So we fried that junction it looks like, or I fried it. Just so you know what a good one's like, let's go to this one. Negative on the base, positive on the collector, 0.643, positive on the emitter, 0.644. And that's what we'd expect to see. So I'm pretty confident that this little transistor is shot. 
I guess if you wanted to uh, confirm, you could uh, desolder, you know, the one beside it or whatever and swap it. See if it stops balancing then on cell 5 and cell 6 starts balancing up. So our little transistors came in. I ordered a pack of 10 here. And just one little problem. I couldn't find any of the IPAC case type. I had to get the D-pack. It's the exact same transistor, except this is meant to be surface mount, you know, horizontally on the board where the pins are, you know, they're bent over. They don't have the long leads like, uh, I'll just dig out that charger again. Where is it here? So you see these have got the long leads. So I'm just going to have to solder on some extensions so we can uh, get that fit. Let's just test this out though so we can make sure it is functioning properly. We'll do the exact same diode test that we did when we were checking the bad one there. Going by our data sheet on the 42 CGs, we know this is the base, collector, emitter. So negative to the base, that's what switches it or saturates it. Uh, collector, there we go, 0.627. Remember in the one that was shot, that was open circuit. We had fried that junction, or I had fried it, and to our emitter, into our emitter pin 0 0.630. So I've just got to straighten these pins out, solder some leads onto that, and we'll get the uh, faulty one desoldered. So just soldered some little leads onto that transistor. As you can see, it's the J42CG replacement. And we've got nine others if we screw this one up. So now we've just got to take this one out. I'm just going to use my little desolder gun. I did a review on this. There'll be a link in the description if you wanted to see it. This thing's been working great. Hold on for a few seconds before you pull vacuum. And if you didn't have a desoldering gun, no big deal. Just use some solder wick. Where are those uh, tweezers? Oh. Why don't we just check this out of circuit just to make sure. <laughs> Probably should have done that before I ordered the new ones. Uh, what, we want to be on diode check here. Again, we know this is the base collector emitter, base negative lead. So no voltage drop at all. We fried the junction between the base and the collector. And the base and emitter junction still fine. So this is definitely shot. And now we've just got to solder this new one into position. Uh-oh, let me guess. Those uh, leads I soldered on. Oh, no. I'm not really a big fan of heat transfer tape. Come on, focus, you bastard thing. I'm sure that'll be fine. Oh, there's some stick left on that thing. Let's get this uh, soldered up. Oxide on the tip always makes life interesting, doesn't it? As in it doesn't work. Now we'll put it back together and see if it works. <laughs> I decided to uh, try this out actually before putting it all back together. So I've just plugged the display back in. 
made sure to get the polarity right. And uh, we'll just check a balance here. See if it works. And the voltage is coming down. And she's also getting hot. I don't know if you can see that in the thermal imaging camera. Let's take a photo of that. We'll fire it up on the uh, screen here. So that little guy is getting nice and warm. And we'll just leave it for a bit, come back and make sure that has balanced up. There we go. Balanced up nicely. Call it fixed. Just got to put it back together now. One thing I should mention, if you do try to do this yourself, notice I've got a piece of masking tape on the back of the display so it's insulated from the circuit board because that's just bare aluminum on the back. So uh, if you're going to do this, just make sure to do something like that if you're going to test it with it out without the case on first. Now I'm just going to get some... Uh, science wipes here and just give this a quick rub down make sure there's no fingerprints on it there we go plug it in and let's charge a battery up Make sure not to get the polarity reversed. But we've got nine more of those little transistors if we do. Just make sure everything's working correctly. If cell six was still buggered, we would see that climbing and we wouldn't see the voltage dropping. Oh, it's looking good. There's there's a load on there, but it's keeping the voltage down, you know, within one millivolt. So if you've got an iCharger S series or X series, even the duos, uh, like the 308 and the 410, whatever, they all use the same architecture. So uh, yeah, pretty easy to fix. And if, yeah, if you don't have a digital multimeter, like I said, you could just swap two of those power transistors around just to see if the fo problem follows the transistor. So it's pretty simple to, to figure out. Excellent. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching and happy uh, RC battery charging repair.